<laughs> Number nine, um, find solid lovers to pull. Similar on, than the clean signals. Um, it's funny because I haven't looked at these notes in about five to 10 years. So I don't actually remember what these are. But um, this is along the lines of, of the clean signals thing, right? That you really want something that, that you, can, you can pull, this lever that you have a lot of leverage with. And um, it's hard to put this in concrete terms, but it's, um, it's this idea of, of leverage, right? So if you have a, you know, if you have a, um, what is it, a seesaw or whatever, right? If you have a thing where you can push down right here on the fulcrum and a lot of stuff actually happens, then that's probably better than, uh, than this other way <laughs> where, you're, where you're pushing down a lot and only a little bit goes up, all right? So I'm trying to think of a good example. When I was actually in grad school, I had some great examples of this, but um, there, are just, there are just things that are way higher leverage for you to do than others. And, and one of the interesting things about, about research being so open-ended is that I've seen, I've easily seen um, kind of 2x or even 5x or maybe even sometimes, rare times 10x differences between peers who came in with the exact same background in terms of what they end up doing. Um, this is something that's so rare in anything else, right? Like in a, in a physical thing, right? Like it's really hard to be 5x stronger or faster than someone else. You may be 1.5x faster than them unless you, you know, take superhuman hormones or whatever. But in research, you really do get this multiplier. And it's because you're in this n-dimensional space you're searching through that you really can be way more productive than someone else if you can actually incrementally search better. Number 10, we'll do three Let's more. Get these last. Yep, so document success and failure. And this is, the, uh, this is the keeping track of your work thing. So you're gonna try a lot of stuff and most of the stuff is not gonna work, but somehow write it down. I mean, you don't have to write it in excruciating detail because that just takes a lot of time, but um, Figure out somehow to figure out uh, you know, what worked and didn't work. And it could be in your head, it could be writing sticky notes, it could be writing on your notepad. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not really for over-documenting because it just takes a lot of time. Uh, and that could be time you're spending actually working. And so I'm not super big on formally documenting everything, but you, know, you should have some idea of what didn't work and what works. So you're not, again, going back in circles again and again. So number 11 is inspect outliers. This is a very data-centric thing, but this could be if you're building stuff if you're building systems and you're running out a bunch of stuff, the outliers are, are perhaps points where interesting stuff happens, right? This is that point earlier of, you know, you're running your tests and a bunch of stuff's expected, like this works, but if there's something that's really strange, there's probably a reason to look into it. It could be a bug, right? Most likely, it's some bug in your tool or your analysis, and which is good to understand because you can fix it, uh, but in rare times, those outliers are where the insights yeah. come in. And last one is eliminate sources bias and this is again a very data centric view and uh and uh this is you know if things this is sort of being self-critical right if, if things are working way too well and, and way too smoothly there may be some bias in your analysis or in your approach that that there's you know it, it's uh it's nice to think that you've gotten everything right the first time but uh probably there's some you know you're veering off in some way uh, and and figuring out how to eliminate those biases are really key to, to doing good science this is the pointing out the limitations section of your work, right? It's always good to yeah. understand the limitations of your approach and the potential biases. This is it for the the sticky notes. It's funny because I haven't actually looked at these for years. I, I, wrote, I wrote them all. I have them. In, I had them in my sticky notes, and I had them in my text file, my computer, waiting to, to talk about this. But I've actually gotten a chance now. So this is something I stared at every day. This is a really nice. This is a really nice set of uh, of points. Uh,